Hi, I'm Peter Cowan, the Bee Whisperer. What do you do when your hive dies? Well, even those of us that have good survivorship over the winter time have some hives that are going to die over the winter. And what I'm going to do is show you today what I do with a dead colony and the sort of things that you should you should do if you've got some if you've got dead bees. Um, you just need to uh, probably a lot less cleaning out than you thought you need to be ready to restock that colony. Okay, so this is this is one that died. So I'll be leaving the rocks behind. I will take everything inside to uh, be reallocated to different yards. Now in this particular colony, I had the uh, uh, winter um, cake on there, the sugar cake on there for the whole hive. They say it made it until January, but for some reason they died off. And so I'll be able to reuse this sugar. I'm not going to throw it out. I'll just re-dissolve it and uh, put it into my syrup, which will get used up in the next couple of weeks. Now really, you don't have to do too much. Take the cozy off. Brush off the dead bees. Now, time so we'll brush off the dead stuff now if I was uh, just stocking with a new package I could put bees straight in here but there's a dead cluster in here so the ideal scenario is number one I want to make sure that there's no mice in here so I'll take the, the super off Still full of honey. That's because they died relatively only about halfway through the winter. Brush out the dead bees. Really, that's about as much as we have to do on the bottom. I'm going to take off these the entrance reducers and mouse guard. Put this back down. Now, most of these frames are still full of honey. This will all be perfectly good to uh, feed back to the bees in the new hives. What you don't want to do is destroy the comb. So again, lots of honey. This is where the cluster was, and just all we have to do is brush off the bees. There are still lots of dead bees in the middle there, and what happened here is that the cluster, those bees died facing their cells. They were in the middle of the cluster, but basically the cluster got too small and gradually died out. My guess 
Nine out of 10 times, this is gonna be a result of mites. Despite all the good treatment and that sort of thing, they still died off this way. Now, people will tell you the bees die face first in the cell. Well, the reason for that is that they starve to death. Yeah, maybe these last bees did starve or freeze in position. But that's because the mites made the cluster smaller and smaller and smaller, which meant they couldn't maintain the heat, which meant that they died in situ because there weren't enough bees to keep them warm. So still all down to mites. I could sample these bees and check to see what's there uh, mite wise, but I'm not going to for now. You see there's a, a little bit of mold here, a little bit of mold up here, but these dead bees, the new occupants will clean those right out of the cell. Yes, the middle of that cluster. And again, just brushing these bees off. Now, one thing which springs to mind is that Always be 100% certain that your bees are dead. Sometimes a cluster is virtually motionless and it looks dead. And wouldn't it be just awful to think that you just brushed these bees to their death in the cold? But uh, that happens sometimes and that's a story for another time. I know many instances where people thought their bees were dead. They thought, oh, look at that there. It's as if they're frozen in time there and they take the cluster into the house only to find that suddenly the house is full of live bees because they just warmed up and they became mobile again. Well, these I know are dead. After a while, you get to know the difference between a dead bee and a live bee. So, that's all the frames cleaned off. These ones, I can see there's not much in there. The other reason for going through them out in the field, if you can, is to make sure you don't take any mice into the house. That's never a good idea. So these bees died with probably 70% of the honey still in the hive, still intact. And this will all be perfectly good to give to the new nukes in the spring. Do most of that cleaning indoors. That was kind of funny. In the process of cleaning that up, taking that stuff to the to the truck, I forgot all those hives are full of live bees, and I'm here banging and knocking against hives, and there's bees right next to my face there with the uh, those nukes on the top, and bees sort of coming out, bouncing off my head. So I was lucky I got away without getting stung in the face. That would have been an amusing uh, blooper for the. Uh, for the real. Who knows? It may yet happen. One down, a few more to go. One of the one of the hives that died was one of my nukes over here. So I'm gonna leave the nukes strapped together because it's helping keeping the rest of the hives warm. So that'll wait until the spring. The, there's another dead one in the far corner there. I'll just bring that stuff over.
and I'll clean these up in the barn. So no point in doing it out in the cold. Now that I've shown you what I'd do if I was leaving it in place, I would have just taken the frames out of the there, cleaned them up, put them back, then close up the entrance to make sure that bees can't rob it out. Because what's going to happen right now, it's 20 degrees, so there's no robbing taking place. But uh, in the weeks preceding a new package arriving or a new nuke arriving, there'll be bees looking for food. And you can get a bit of a peak of robbing in the spring as well as in the fall. So if you do leave your honey in frames exposed outside, make sure that the entrance is, is uh, closed off with screen so a bit of air can get in, but that bees cannot get in and rob out the honey that you have that's going to keep those bees going for the winter, for the, as they develop in the spring. Just making sure I'm not taking any mice in. And we'll go to the dead hive. It's a great place for a mouse to hang out. And I don't want mice in my barn. Certainly a beautiful day to do this. So, the three colonies that died were all single story colonies, as opposed to most of them which are double story colonies. And I'd fully expect that. You're most likely to have your losses amongst your smallest hives. The big ones were clearly bigger, stronger, big cluster, lots of food going into the winter. And the bigger the cluster of bees, the more, the more they can absorb problems. Whereas a small cluster is kind of living on a knife edge the whole time. And so whilst you can do a lot with a small cluster, your losses will tend to be higher when you've got a small cluster of bees. clearly had some sort of digestive issue, can be nosema, and I can take samples of the bee's guts for that, but uh, with the hive having frozen solid for the last few weeks, no real issues about this being transferred from this colony to the new one. So there are certain, were certainly plenty of bees in here. So there are plenty of dead bees on the bottom.
So three dead colonies. There's a dead nuke in there, but that's not coming out for another month or two. So if that's all I lose this winter, I will be very pleased. Um, at the moment I'm averaging, looks like about 94% across my yards. Uh, there's still a little way to go, but uh, I'll settle for that. Had another delivery today of electric fence equipment. So, uh, about eight solar charges, plenty of wire, plenty of fence posts. So we'll do a video on that when the ground thaws and we're setting up a new yard. So I'm setting up a couple of new yards this year. So in addition, to, I cleared out one dead hive from Bangor yesterday and there's three more dead ones today. So I have five supers to sort through and what I'll do, and I'll do this in another video when I've got the rest in, is separate honey in one group, empty frames in another group, and frames of pollen and that sort of thing in another group. They'll get cleaned up, scraped down, supers will be scraped down. I'll save little bits of wax and uh, they'll all be ready for the new hives in the future. So spring is coming, nearly here. I'm Peter Cowan, the Bee Whisperer. See you next time.